do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos subject name soil mechanics chapter shear strength of a soil stress at a point so in continuation to our previous discussion well let let's consider a soil mass inside a, a ground uh, we consider a square block of soil mass <coughs> objected to the horizontal and vertical stresses as shown in figure sigma x and the sigma y so and also uh, we consider that the tangential stresses as shown in the figure like this tau y x this is tau second obviously denotes the direction second letter so second is and first denote the the plane so this is y x this is uh, x y and uh, so see here the shear stresses are on this plane it's uh, clockwise and on this plane so this clockwise shear has to be balanced by an, an anti clockwise shear so obviously this tau yx and tau xy has to be equal in magnitude because this is the this is the square block so uh, this dimension is equal to this dimension because it's a square so this is the anti clockwise so this is the sorry clockwise shear force so this tries to rotate the block in clockwise manner and this will try to keep it in equilibrium by applying an anti clockwise shear so these are has to be uh, balanced by a moment equilibrium equation and this sigma x this sigma x will get balanced this sigma y and this sigma y will get balanced so th this is how this is how the force of force equilibrium and the moment equilibrium so uh, and if you again take a plane inside this specimen which is uh, at an angle theta from this point let's this as a theta we, we have taken this as the reference point okay so this as the reference plane so at this plane there is a normal force normal stress sorry equals to sigma y and the tangential stress equals to tau y x or tau x y so the, these are both same because these are balanced by an moment equilibrium equation so tau x y or tau y x these are nothing but the same we can also call it this uh, as a q which is the applied shear stress on this plane and uh, this is your sigma x which is in the x direction and y is the uh, y is in the y direction so before going no, before going into further discussion we must introduce the sign conventions so in soil mechanics we follow the sign convention we take compressive stress as positive we take compressive stress as positive and tensile stress as negative because we don't want tensile stress because soil fails in uh, tension in very brittle manners and, and obviously always at any cases uh, there are likely to happen the only the compressive stresses tensile stress will not happen at all will not occur at all so and the anti-clockwise uh, anti-clockwise uh, shear stress so see this is the anti-clockwise shear stress so we take this as positive opposite and clockwise as negative clockwise shear stress as negative so uh, if you take if you, if you consider the equilibrium of a part a b c so we consider the equilibrium of part a b c in the next diagram this is a b c and uh, this is your sigma y value this is your sigma x value and uh, these these are your shear stresses q values and uh, obviously these are these are the failure uh, fail, uh, these are the uh, not the failure plan this is the just internal uh, plane located at an angle of theta from this uh, point a so uh, the, and, and, and obviously on this plane 
if I plot uh, this as the normal stress sigma n and uh, tangential stress as tau. So these are the uh, stresses uh, acting on this plane AC at an angle theta with respect to AB. So if I uh, take the semi, take the force equilibrium into consideration, then uh, then then uh, let's see what happens. See, I'll consider this size as x. You can take any letter. So we we'll take it uh, take it as this value. At small x so if this as x then this become then BC becomes obviously this is x and uh, uh, the, uh, the, let's suppose this AC as this AC we, we take it as length L so if this is L then cos this BC this AC becomes x becomes L cos theta and uh, BC becomes uh, L sin theta. So that, that that's how it it, it it became. So if this is X, then uh, sin theta is obviously BC upon hypotenuse L, and uh, cos theta is obviously the adjacent, which is nothing but AB upon L. So you if you uh, resolve the forces in the x directions and equate it to zero and also if you resolve the forces in the y direction and equate it to zero you will get the two set of the equations and uh, from the two set of equation you can easily calculate the sigma x values and the tau value so if you do it uh, you'll get the normal uh, stresses as normal stresses as a function of sigma x sigma y and the q value as follows so we'll get uh, sigma n equals to sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sine square theta plus uh, tau plus tau or, or we call it as q into sine 2 theta to sine 2 theta you will get and obviously the tau value you will get it as uh, sigma x minus uh, sigma y upon 2 multiplied by uh, sine 2 theta minus uh, q cos uh, two, 2 theta so these are the two values of the normal and tangential stress acting at an any uh, plane which is inclined at an angle of theta that, that that's how you will get uh, if you again consider the block uh, which is free from this tangential stresses q if we consider the block which is which has consists of only sigma y and sigma x values then obviously the and again if you take an any plane which is inclined at an angle theta like this and obviously you'll get the normal stresses and uh, tangential stresses acting on this plane as obviously in, in this expression you need to replace this q by 0 so you will get a sigma n equals to you get sigma n equals to sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sine square theta and obviously the shear stress tau has sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sine 2 theta so these are the quite simpler expressions so we have uh, just seen these two expressions so if you have the if you didn't have the q then you just you need to deduct this q from this equation so we just continue one more expression uh, because let if you if you consider this example uh, it is being I say that and on this plane there acts an uh, shear stress equals to q and on this plane also the shear stress q is acting but if you take this example this this plane doesn't have any uh, shear stress so generally we call the plane at which there is no shear stress as the major principal plane
major principal plane and also this this is also one of the principal plane but if one becomes major the second becomes minor depending on the values of sigma x and sigma y this is minor principal plane so if sigma x uh, I, I am assuming here as the sigma y is greater than sigma x as that, that of in the previous cases so this becomes a major principal plane and this becomes a minor principal plane because this is been free of the shear stress now wh why it is called as the major principal plane so uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll take, we'll take this uh, case we will take this case uh, if you take a derivative of uh, equation number 1 with respect to the theta value if you take the derivative of equation 1 with respect to theta value and if you equate it to 0 that means for a maximum value of sigma n if you take its derivative for maximum value of sigma n that expression I'll just write it rewrite sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sin square theta plus q times of uh, sin 2 theta so that, that is again the same expression so this is again the same expression q cos 2 theta so we take its derivative with respect to theta and equate it to 0 for maximum value of the normal stresses you take its derivative and equate it to 0 we will get it as uh, sigma x cos square theta derivative is 2 cos theta and cos derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta and uh, plus sigma y into 2 sine theta derivative of sine theta is plus cos theta plus q 2q uh, sorry not 2q is just the q as a derivative of uh, sine theta is cos uh, 2 theta and the derivative of again 2 theta is 2 so it becomes again the 2 q and so if you equate it uh, to 0 then you will get this expression uh, minus sigma x minus sigma x into 2 into uh, 2 cos theta sin theta plus sigma y 2 sigma y sin theta cos theta and uh, plus 2q cos 2 theta and again if you take if you take uh, take 2 in common from the, this figure so you will get uh, sigma y minus sigma x no I will not take 2 common I uh, will just uh, rewrite this multiplied by uh, 2 sig cos uh, 2 sin theta cos theta is uh, sin 2 theta and plus 2 q cos theta I'll write it uh, the same way so if you uh, let's have a look at the value of the tau so if you multiply this equation by 2 and uh, if you take a minus side on both the side you'll get the same again the same expression so this value is minus 2 tau and so if this becomes 0 see this value sigma n is maximum is this value of normal stress is maximum at tau is equal to 0 obviously this is being clear from the mathematical derivation so hence in this example you will get this plane which is free of these two planes which is free of the shear stresses and hence these two planes are called as the principal planes so out of these two principal planes one will be the major and another is a minor depending on the magnitude of uh, sigma y and sigma x so these are uh, the two cases where you will get the definitions of the major principal plane and the minor principal plane uh, so that's how that, that's all about the uh, concepts and also you can uh, find these uh, expressions in the book as well and also you can uh, take uh, take the help of your expressions and you can draw the more circle and you can determine all these uh, stresses inside a soil mass in a very quick manner we'll see it in the uh, next video thank you